Hi, this is Mike Queen. I'm one of the programmers at Microsystems World CNC and WinCNC is our product. I've been getting some questions about how to import a DXF file into WinCNC and use it. I thought that I might give a quick demo on how that works. The first thing you need to know is that you cannot run a DXF directly from WinCNC. You must import it and convert it to a TAP file, a G-code file, which can then be ran on WinCNC. I have generated a couple of DXF files that I want to show you. To get to them, you go to File, Import, DXF, first one I want to look at is this. I've got two of them here. I've got one called testshape.dxf, the other called testshapeoffset.dxf. And I'll explain more about the offset one here in just a minute. I click open and I get this screen, the Save As screen, and it's asking me what I want to name it. So I want to name it the same as the file that I'm getting it from. I'm going to save that back into the temp folder also. And that way I know which file I've worked with that I'm working with. I click Save. This screen pops up. The first thing that I want to do is make sure that I'm on router because I want to cut this the next thing that I want to do is I know how much clearance I want. I want to be able to move around above my material about a quarter of an inch above the material. So I'm going to go 0.25 here. I'm cutting this in negative. In other words, I'm zeroing on top of my material. So I want to go minus 0.25. The number of passes, I'm doing this in plastic, so I'll do it in one pass. Uh, horizontal feed rate probably about 200 inches per minute and the vertical feed rate about 100. You know, M3 to start it and an M5 to stop it. Don't need more feed commands. Uh, I do want to enable smart ordering. I want it to be 100 percent. I don't need line numbers. I don't want to rotate this. Um, I want it to be a router and normally I would click this and have it uh, auto position the part on the left lower left corner at zero zero but I do not in this case because I want to show you something with the two files that I generate. So here I've got all the settings that I need so I'll just click OK and if you notice it generated a file here. Now I'm going to click in the upper left hand corner of the part and drag down across it to the lower right hand corner. Let up. And it zoomed in on my part. Click upper left, drag to lower right and it zooms in. To zoom back out, I'd hold down shift and left click on my mouse. I can also do it from this side. Doesn't really matter which direction you go in as long as you drag a box around the part. Now what we want to look at here is see this hole. When I generated this part, when I drew this part up, I drew it with 3 8 holes. Uh, these are bolt holes. It's going to take a 3 h 3 8 bolt here and I want my part, my hole to be 3 8 It would take just a shade smaller bolt if this were a real part. But the problem here is, is when you do a DXF it draws the g-code on the line. In other words, this is 3 8 well, the problem is, 
is this is the center also the center of the tool in other words if I'm using a quarter inch end mill I have eighth inch of my tool over on this side of this line and another eighth of an inch of my tool on this side of my line get over here to where it's a little clearer I have one eighth inch of the tool setting inside the blue line I have another eighth inch of the tool setting outside the blue line so I'm actually going to cut an eighth inch off this side, an eighth inch off of this side, which would be an extra quarter. So three eighths plus two eighths is five eighths. Uh, the hole would wind up being five eighths of an inch, not what we want. Um, also, and by the way, I'm, I'm right clicking to zoom out. I can zoom out a little at a time by right clicking. Um, also, this line here is the exact dimensions of my part. Remember, my tool, this is the center of my tool. This represents the center of my tool. And my tool would pass right through here, the center of it. Therefore, 1 8 inch of my tool is here, 1 8 inch of my tool is here. My part's going to be cut in here, which is an 8 inch smaller all the way around than the actual part that I want to cut. So, it's not going to be right, uh, so I've got to do something. Uh, this is the problem with importing DXFs into WinCNC and expecting them to cut correctly. They will not unless you set them up correctly to begin with. And that's where we get our next shape, our offset shape. Now I'm going to go back up and I'm going to go to File, Import. DXF, going to go back to my temp folder again, I'm going to get that other file, Now, it's, it's test shape offset dot tap. And the reason the offset is I've already offset this file to compensate for my tool radius. In other words, like this hole here, uh, in order to cut that correctly, I would have to be offset an eighth of an inch in on each side, basically a quarter of an inch in uh, to make this work correctly. Uh, in other words, the circle inside here totally would be one quarter of an inch smaller than this one here. So what I've done is compensate for that. Also, to compensate for this so that this will be actual part, actual size, I'll have to draw my line out here. So you can see this, is, this has a sharp corner. My other one will have an, a rounded corner on it, and you'll be able to tell them apart. This one will be inside of the one that I drew. This larger circle will be outside the one that I drew. So I click Save. I use these same settings because I don't want to change anything. I was happy with these settings. I come down. I still don't want to do the auto positioning. I click OK. And now I want to zoom in. You'll notice that my holes are a lot smaller than they were. Uh, this is actually a quarter of an inch smaller in diameter than my 3 8 was. So now also you'll notice that this corner is rounded where the other one was sharp and square it would have come in here and gone around. So this one will actually cut a 3 8 inch hole with a quarter inch bit because it's offset to the inside and this one would cut the shape correctly because it's offset one eighth inch to the outside of of the original part. Now in order to show that I can load, I can draw this file and I mean, I can load this file right in with the other file. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to hand edit this file, which I don't advise unless you really know what you're doing. N98 means run something. And I'm going to insert that and I'm going to go dot tap. Now if I got it set correctly, after I save this, I can click my eyeball viewer up here and we should see it zoom out and we should see two of these of these shapes you'll see a larger hole around this one you'll see a smaller outline so I'm gonna go ahead and do this I messed up there I don't want the offset one I want that one now I click save now you can see the two that I intended for you to see you can see this original shape here as the sharp corner you can also see that my outline my cut my new cut will be on the outside an eighth inch away from this one and it will cut it out correctly also you'll see that this is much a smaller it's actually an eighth inch smaller eighth inch on this side eighth inch on this side away uh, and it will be the same thing on all of the other shapes you can see here that, that these shapes are the originals no I'm sorry the outside is is the original line these are cut to the inside and they're an eighth inch to the inside on each side same thing on all of them across on and on each of the holes the offset dot tap would cut correctly so that's just to tell you that that if you do not have if you've got a CAD CAM software use it and use it to let it do the tool radius offset if you do not have a CAD CAM software and you do happen to have AutoCAD or something that you can draw your DXF files in uh, you should try to offset them for the tool radius compensation and uh, if you get them set up correctly you can actually cut two-dimensional parts uh, by doing it that way creating a DXF that is offset in the way I did this one and importing it into WinCNC and generating a tap file from it I hope this helps you understand how the DXF file import works in WinCNC thank you and have a good day